divide can be traced back to the late 1800s during what was called by the Imperial European powers the scramble for Africa. Colonization was motivated by the European hunger for African resources. The subsequent exploitation of the African people and the uprooting of their spiritual values by Christian missionaries would leave a permanent European stamp on the continent. The mindset is the barbarians are backward and inferior and for their own benefit we have to uplift them and civilize them and educate them and so on. The uh, psychology behind it is kind of transparent. I mean, when you've got your boot on someone's neck and you're crushing them, you can't say to yourself, I'm a son of a bitch and I'm doing it for my own benefit. So what you have to do is figure out some way of saying, I'm doing it for their benefit. And that's a, a very natural uh, position to take when you're beating somebody with a club. Britain cut the largest piece of African cake from Cairo to Cape Town, in addition to Nigeria and a few West African regions. It was also the British Empire that in 1894 imposed an arbitrary boundary around the many diverse ethnic groups and kingdoms that would make up Uganda. The southern Bantu-speaking people were given economic, political, and educational advantage. The northern ethnic groups, two in particular, the Acholi and the Langi, were the main recruits for military and police positions. By exploiting linguistic, ethnic, and cultural differences between the peoples of the North and South, Britain's divide and rule policies created a tension between them that helped maintain British rule. The French took an east-west slice of the continent as well as Madagascar. The Belgians took Rwanda, Burundi, and the Congo in what Joseph Conrad called the vilest scramble for loot that ever disfigured the history of human conscience. Slave labor took over five million lives. In Rwanda, Belgium entrenched the idea of the Hutu as a workforce and the Tutsi as extenders of Belgian rule. The politicization of these two cultures would profoundly contribute to the genocide of 1994. In Sudan, the British ruled the Arabs in the north and the blacks in the south as separate colonies, only to combine the areas before independence in 1956. The result has been relentless civil war the Darfur massacres being the latest tragedy. The Portuguese decimated Angola, Mozambique, and Guinea-Bissau well into the 1970s. The Italians took Libya, Eritrea, and Somalia. The Germans added Cameroon and Tanzania and committed the first genocide of the 20th century against the Herero people. No colonial power uh, is going to succeed unless it's going to uh, play on existing divisions and sharpen them, increase them, exacerbate them. So one of the first questions after the end of colonialism is who belongs and who doesn't? Uh, who, who, who was part of the colonial struggle and who betrayed? And this is time to settle scores. Mm -hmm.